Vicki Ward, the author of Kushner, Inc., comes on the show and spills some mind-boggling stuff about, the Kushner, about Jared and Ivanka, basically. Check it out, leave your comments, and please subscribe. Uh, Editor-at-large at Huffington Post, author of the new book, Kushner, Inc., Greed, Ambition, Corruption. VickiWard.com, V-I-C-K-Y-W-A-R-D.com is the website, and people can tweet you at Vicky P.J. Ward. And Vicky, tell us about the book, Kushner, Inc. Is this about uh, Jared's father and him, or is this about Jared and his wife? I'm sorry, I haven't had an opportunity to read it or even see it yet. Uh, so it, it's uh, the extraordinary story of Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. Um, uh, and it's really the story of two people who are not what I think we all hope they'd be, not what they seemed. Um, you know, the real story, um, you know, Jared and Ivanka, unfortunately, are not the moral center of this administration, which is what a lot of people hoped at the at the outset. They're not the moderating influence. Um, well, this is how the media characterized them. Uh, you, know, you know, they used to be Democrats. They're reasonable people. They're young. They're attractive. Right. Isn't this sweet? They'll moderate crazy old Donald. This is not the case, huh? <laughs> Right, and I think that the uh, the book shows that actually they the, these two, you know, and I, you you mentioned the fa uh, Jared's father Charlie, mm. that these two, because of their backgrounds and because of the culture that they come from, um, are very entitled and very disdainful of rules, including the rule of law. They really believe that rules are for other people. Um, and, you know, this has created um, all sorts of problems, actually, just uh, on, on a small level uh, in the working environment of the White House, because, you know, every, most people go into government for public service, and they have to divest of, every, you know, of all their assets, stocks and shares, of everything they have to, to avoid conflict of interest. Jared and Ivanka... Um, really haven't divested at all it's as if you know that they're in you know rules don't matter for them um and you know this has all sorts of really serious ramifications um it affects you know the way they've conducted themselves in domestic policy and in foreign policy and i think the book makes the argument that it's it's really dangerous for this country so how did how did this whole uh, myth of Javanka, of Jared and Ivanka being, you know, these wonderful, helpful people. How did this evolve? Where did this come from? Was this was this an intentional thing? Was this like, you know, they hired a PR firm to to push this out into the into the media sphere, or it, it was this uh, just you know wishful thinking on the part of you know all of us? Or I mean, what? No. So it's really interesting. So Jared and Ivanka are very similar uh, people, um, and both of them. Um, sort of consider public relations number one priority. Ivanka once said, you know, uh, perception is much more important than reality. She actually wrote that mm -hmm. in one of her books. And, you know, both of them, for I say in the book, have been sort of programmed or programmed themselves um, for different reasons to sort of appear as the far more sort of sophisticated, shinier, glossier version of their respective fathers. Mm -hmm. You know, Jared's entire adult life, his, the, his mission has been to avenge what happened to his father, who went to jail uh, in 2005. At the hands of Chris and, Christie. Yes, and to rehabilitate the Kushner family name. And I, I say in the book, there was actually a, a, you know, a really considered three-point plan uh, that was cooked up by the uh, public relations guru, Harold Rubenstein, that, you know, the Kushners had to sell up out of New Jersey and buy a trophy building in New York. That was part one. Part two was to buy a media outlet so they could control their image. And the third was for Jared to date someone prominent. And, you know... I remember when this, this was like a couple of years ago, this, this story first broke that... That you know the reason Jared married Ivanka was because that was his 
his ticket back into respectability and the reason he bought, what is it, the New York Observer, this newspaper? Yeah, yeah, so the, and the, well, the Observer was sort of put him in the, the social orbit to meet Ivanka. So the, but the point is that I think that these two are, you know, have been programmed to focus on their image. And they are the ones that have been very busy um, putting out this m sort of myth, this surface idea that they are the adults in the room. And I think the book really shows how um, they're just not uh, what they seem, right. um, that they are, they are very, very transactional. We're talking with Vicki Ward, her new book that, she's, that she just referred to is Kushner, Inc., Greed, Ambition, Corruption. VickiWard.com is the website. Of course, the book is available today uh, wherever you get your, your books. Um, Vicki, is all of this a, a, um, a, a little more sophisticated or, or uh, you know, uh, friendly for the New York Times way of saying that basically Jared and Ivanka are grifters? Yeah, that was the, you put it. <laughs> That's an, that, you got it right. And, and, and if so, and, and that, you know, that they both learned it from their fathers? That would also be correct. But I think what's, what's sort of more important is um, the ramifications for that once you go into government. I mean, look, mm. you know, Jared, when he worked for his father in, in the family's real estate f firm, um, you know, and, I, and my last book was about the world of New York real estate. So I, I, I know this subject area very, very well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he developed a reputation for being an imperious delegator who didn't really know um, the details of anything. And, you know, he was a bit of a bully and very rude to subordinates, but not to, to anyone important. Now, not knowing the details doesn't really matter when you're running, um, you know, your father's business that you're going to inherit. But it really matters when you go into the White House and then suddenly you haven't filled out a security clearance form correctly. And suddenly, oh, look, uh, there's an there's a FBI investigation led by James Comey um, looking at Russian collusion. And, oh, look, Jared hasn't mentioned uh, on his form that he met with, you know, a senior Russian diplomat and a, a, a Kremlin-connected banker during the transition. And so, ah, Jared, Jared, and I say this in the book, is the one who pushes Trump to fire James Comey at exactly the same time that the media suddenly learns of all these very, very serious omissions from his, for, on his security clearance form. And Jared, who normally sort of whispers privately in Trump's ear, on this occasion had a stand-up row in front of people and in front of the president with Steve Bannon and, and, and made a three pronged argument to Trump that he must fire James Comey. He said, number one, uh, the, the FBI doesn't like Comey. Number two, the Democrats don't like Comey. And three, the base uh, will love it if you fire him. You know, there are lots of people who, dis you know, who disagree this with This is a Jared. purely yeah. political uh, argument in well, for the firing the head of the FBI? Right. No, it, it, was, it, was, it was, you know, perceived as uh, an effort to save himself. Because Comey was looking into Jared Kushner well, because, too. Because he, because obviously, you know, it's it, it it can be it's a felony not to fill out the secure a security clearance form correctly. Uh huh. But uh, is Jared so so um, short sighted that he thought that it, he's committed a crime? The head of the FBI is looking into this crime. Get rid of the head of the FBI, and the and the criminal investigation is going to go away. I mean, if that was his logical thought process, that. That seems like the thought process of, of a you know a, a pre teenager. Right, but but these two people, you know, Jared and Ivanka, you know, you have to think of them a bit like Inspector Clouseau. You know, everyone else can see the sort of bumbling incompetence right. around the White House, but they can't see it themselves. So you're the little boy who's saying the you know the the, the emperor has no clothes here. I mean, right. you know, to use that. Yes. Or that's little exactly, girl, as the case may be. I yeah, exactly. to use that, old. That, that is exactly correct. I mean, you know, the next thing he did um, that, that I, you know, again, isn't, isn't an obvious move for, for people of normal judgment. 
you know, he's busy having all these meetings with uh, investors of companies that he hasn't actually divested from. In, some, in one case, he hadn't even disclosed it at that disclosed that he still had an investment. And um, in all, in, and he he's the one who pushes for the White House logs to be closed. Remember the the, yeah. the spring? Yeah. I mean, that's an outrage. I mean, at, at the time. Um, the, the oh, these are the visitor logs. Yeah, the visitor this logs. This is how we find out who's who's hanging out with the White House with yeah, people you know, in the White House. It's the, it, the American public is entitled to know what's happening at the White House. Yes, they are entitled to know who's going in, and and um, the and at the time, um, the official word was that the logs were closed for security reasons. Mm. Um, but actually, Trump. Yeah, you know, he didn't like the the backlash in the media, and he turned to Sean Spicer, who was then the press secretary, and said, "Who has closed the logs, and why?" And uh, you know, Ryan Priebus, Steve Bannon, everyone around, you, you know, they all suspected. Actually, they knew it was Jared, who was conducting all this business because his father had a serious um, financial problem. He had a building, this trophy building in New York, was bleeding financially and he desperately needed um foreign investment mm. so you know of course jared didn't want the public knowing uh what was going on but it, what happened was that a year later um john kelly you know a general with a general's mindset um actually opened the white house logs so that then we were able to see that actually, you know, Jared had had all these meetings not w with Lloyd Blank Fine, who is an investor in a company he still had uh, a stake in, um, Apollo and Citigroup, who then subsequently made loans to his family business. Vicky, uh, tell me about the the relationship between Jared Kushner and and uh, the the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, and how that relationship, A, came about, B, why, Jared, why it's important to Jared, and C, how it's distorting American foreign and perhaps even domestic policy. Yeah. So, um, Jared, I think, looked at the, this, the, he was then the future Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, and I think he thought he saw um, an opportunity, you know, money, is what he, he saw. He that thought, the, the Saudis or their, or their other billionaire buddies in the Middle East might invest in Jared's right, right, building right. that was bleeding yeah. money. Well, and sub subsidize his uh, peace plan uh -huh. um, and, his, you know, and, and also his, his private interest. Um, MBS, on the other hand, I think saw Jared as a pawn. As a useful idiot. Who could be useful, yeah, and, get, and, and a conduit into the White House. Um, and someone to be played. So MBS um, very sort of cleverly, um, you know, persuades Jared to persuade Trump to have the, you know, presidential, the first official U.S. visit is not to, you know, a country with shared democratic values like Britain or France, but to the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, where they have this summit that's meant to be all about cooperation in the Gulf, right? And uh, days after it's over, MBS makes a complete mockery of the whole thing and of America by uh, announcing a blockade on the neighbor, a neighboring country of Qatar, which is much because he, wa he, he wanted its resources. Qatar is much richer than Saudi Arabia. Um, hmm, I didn't and, know that. And, uh, uh, and 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 the U and Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State, and Jim Mattis, the Secretary of Defense, were absolutely horrified. They'd had no idea of this. Well, and that's because the MBS fifth or sixth fleet or whatever is is based in Qatar, isn't it? Right. But but what's what's even worse is Rex Tillerson knew that the MBS would never have done this if he hadn't had a green light from Jared Kushner. Mm. And at the, and what's noticeable is the Qataris had recently turned the Kushners down. The, the Kushners had gone to them for money for their building. And so you just have to follow the money. I mean, it's really simple. So Jared Kushner, still thinking that MBS is going to pay for all the things he's ambitious on, then, you know, is, uh, you know, blocks everyone, all the national, you know, everyone in the State Department, National Security Council, who should be sitting in on meetings, are all kept out. While Jared has these private 
visits back and forth. And the next thing that happens is MBS, right after Jared's been visiting, MBS uh, rounds up his, uh, you know, his efforts to get money for out of Qatar haven't worked. So the next source of money, he goes to, he rounds up all these uh, 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 influential Saudis and imprisons them, if you remember, mm-hmm. um, ac- accusing them of corruption. Rex Tillerson said to Jared Kushner, Jared, have you noticed there, that there are seven branches of the uh, Saudi royal family. The only branch that MBS has not imprisoned are his own blood relatives. Don't you think it's statistically unlikely that they're not corrupt too? And Jared just didn't want to know. Vicky, just uh, we, we, we just have uh, a couple of minutes here before, right. before the end of this block. Um, just to wrap this up, we were just talking about how uh, Kushner goes over to uh, Saudi Arabia. MBS, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, has, has determined that he can play this guy. Kushner is desperately hoping he's going to get money both for his own personal efforts and to fund the Middle East peace deal from the Saudis. Immediately after he goes over, um, uh, MBS arrests a whole bunch of people from six of the seven branches of, mm-hmm. of uh, the Saudi royal family. The one branch that doesn't get busted is his own family. Kushner doesn't want to hear about that. Um, the one piece that that I have heard that I'm I'm not hearing and I'm, I'm I'm wondering about is is it possible that the the reason that MBS was able to specifically target individuals within Saudi Arabia for this shakedown and for and, and apparently in one case even beating one of these guys to death was yeah. because Jared Kushner shared secret yes. U.S. intelligence that, that with in, with that the is prince in the book and that was confirmed to me by several intelligence sources yes. So we have a guy, an advisor to the president of the United States in the White House, a grifter, who, who shared top secret U.S. intelligence with the leader of another country who then used that to imprison and kill his own citizens. That seems to me pretty radical. I mean, that, that... It's extraordinarily radical. And, and, and the story has another twist because, I mean, it, it's just it's shocking. Okay, but we have what, just one minute twist. left. Go for it. The M, so then that we get to spring of 2018, MBS comes to the United States, and Trump asks the president asks him for four billion dollars to ha- to help rebuild Syria, and MBS says actually I don't have enough money because he spent so much money on this very brutal war in in the Yemen, um, and oil prices were down. Um, Jared Kushner, hearing this, um, you know starts to feel rather differently. The Qataris then come to town and say, we've got lots of money, but we need the blockade against us lifted. What happens? A company whose second biggest shareholder is the Qatari Investment Authority bails out the Kushner family building in an, on an astonishing deal, a 99-year lease paid up front, which is unheard of. And the U.S., uh, no, says it's no longer going to support the blockade on Qatar. Wow. Welcome to foreign policy dictated by the Kushner's personal financial needs.